my biggest ambition is really um, people, seeing people happy, um, seeing people comfortable with who they are, uh, recognising their own skills, um, seeing families sort of growing and developing in a way that's holistic and genuine. Um, yeah. Ambition for me is also about um, just equal recognition, people equality really, people all having the same opportunities to achieve the things that they want to achieve, that, to um, be valued in the way that they want to be valued. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, in a nutshell. So are you ambitious by that definition? Um, yep. Definitely, I think I am. Um, it's probably taken me all of my life, and that's only 40 years, to realise what some of my natural skill sets is, and that's probably communication. Um, but my ambition was is really driven from um, feeling in my earlier years inadequate, really, and, and comparing myself to what others have achieved or... Um, others expectations and, and never quite getting there and so once I started to recognize my own skills of you know really being empathetic and, and seeing and recognizing and valuing people for who they really are um, I started to thrive on that and think well actually I can do anything I choose to do and so can you you know so yeah I think I think I do live by that yeah so you how you think of yourself in terms of ambition has changed throughout your life yeah, I think my confidence has changed. It's grown over the years. Um, yeah, I think some... There's been some cases, I guess, where I've been ambitious because of a default of what's happened to me. Um, you know, whether it was the way that I was treated or whether it was just an unfortunate circumstance that's kind of driven me to um, process quite quickly quickly and, and become resilient and look at ways so I can overcome that but um, how can I learn from that and, and show others easier pathways so yeah um, yeah can you describe for me the most ambitious person that you know apart from yourself um, within my whanau base or what pops into your mind when I say that? Someone close, someone far, anything is fine. Um, well, when I think of my whānau base, it's, it's, I, I'm the oldest, so I'm the only girl. Um, and I've got four younger brothers and they're all really ambitious, I think, in the way, in the pathways that they've chosen for themselves. Um, given our childhood, I mean, we had some difficulties there and, and they've all grown into different careers and doing really well. Um, our parents were not employed for most of our childhood, so that was always a struggle. Um, so we've got one, one brother that's a real estate agent in Christchurch doing really well. Um, we've got another brother in Melbourne who's in banking. He speaks two different languages. Um, we've got another brother that's in Brisbane and um, I think he's building at the moment, but he was working in the mines. And another brother up north who, that's our baby, uh, he's working in farming. And that, so I think uh, because of our childhood of mum and dad never really having any money or struggling with employment, they were really driven to, to not do the same. So yeah. Um, on the bigger scale, more worldly scale, I think of some of our tipuna and the things that they achieved in their time. Um, yeah, there's lots of different people come to. I start thinking of sort of national icons like Muhammad Ali, um, Nelson Mandela. But yeah, even people that I've met just through my life on the street or that they. Every day you hear different stories from people and what they've overcome. And some of them are the most 
and vicious people I've ever met. Yeah. Is there anything that would enable you to be more ambitious? Um, yeah, I think when, if I look at my own confidence, I still, I can go out and do lots of, um, get really engaged in community projects and look at um, things that inspire people to be connected and that. But I, um, and I'm quite good at that, but I still struggle, uh, I still, I, and it comes right from a child, it, even I was thinking about my first day at school when I was five, and walking into a classroom, so I grew up at Sefton Primary School, I had a great primary school upbringing, but we, when I started school, I was the, we were the only Māori family, and I remember walking into that classroom and right then recognising that, um, you know, that I was just different. And that, that was, you know, mainly because I was the only Māori kid there. And that's kind of stayed with me all the way through my life. So there's still times where I can be really confident and do all these amazing things, but I still um, reserve a lot, a lot of what I could give because of your, um, your fear of judgment or or perceive perceptions from people of what they think you should be advocating for or, or motivated about or something or just people's lack of understanding of having you know a dual thinking space you know so yeah that's that's still you'd think after 40 I would have overcome that but I still have fears sometimes where um, I can do lots of things and then I can withdraw myself and, and, and be quite um can choose to isolate as well so yeah um yeah so I think if I'd learnt to cope with some of that at an earlier age um I could have gone off to do even more great things but I'm I'm quite comfortable with everything that I've done to date